grade 12 and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at impulse as well as the impulse momentum theorem. If you've missed the other videos about momentum, you can just click the link below for my momentum and impulse playlist. Let's jump right in. First things first, what is impulse? In order for you to understand impulse, I want to show you the definition, which you see above, as well as the formula, which we will write here together. Now, with the definition, you, not, you guys need to know that you absolutely need to know this definition for matric. You need to know for your junior exams, prelims, finals. And if you get the wording incorrect or leave out important key terms in the definition, you can get marked down. You can get marks deducted. So let's take a look at the definition. It says impulse. The product of the resultant or net force acting on an object and the time that the resultant or net force acts on the object. First things first, impulse is a vector, which means it needs a direction. I'll discuss the unit with you in a second, but let's take the formula. Let's take the definition and produce a formula from the definition. So impulse is equal to the product. Now, grade 12, you should know what product means. It means multiplication, the product of the resultant or net force acting on an object, so that is F net, and the time that the force acts on the object. So therefore, delta T. That's your definition. That's impulse. So impulse is equal to the product, so times multiplication of the resultant or net force acting on an object and the time that the resultant or net force acts on an object. So two things that can increase impulse. One is F net. The larger the net force or the resultant force, the larger the impulse. Another thing that can increase impulse is time. The longer the net force acts on the object, the greater the impulse. So think of it as, imagine two objects colliding, the longer the collision lasts for, the greater the time of the collision, the greater the impulse. The greater the force of the collision, the greater the impulse. Now looking at that formula, F net times delta T, that gives me impulse. This allows me to figure out my unit for impulse. So let's figure out the unit together. What is the unit for F net? You guys should know that the unit for F net is Newton. What is the unit for time? The unit for time is seconds. Newton times seconds. That gives me my unit for impulse, which is Newton seconds. Take note how it is not Newtons per second. It's not that. It's Newton seconds. N dot S. Okay. Another thing that I want you to take note of is the following. Remember in the previous videos where we were looking at combining Newton's second law and momentum? Well, when we did that, we got this formula over here. F net equals delta P over delta T. If you need to go back to that video, it'll be linked in the description box. But remember what, we, what I showed you, that if you have that formula, we can rearrange it to give us the following. F net delta T equals delta P. All I did to get from here to here is I took delta T or time over. And when I took time over, it became F net multiplied by delta T equals delta P. What this means is if I take the net force acting on an object and I multiply it by the time over which that force acts, that is equal to the change of momentum of the object. Now think very carefully about this. We just defined what impulse was. Impulse is the product of the resultant force, so F net, and time. F net multiplied by time. Look here. F net multiplied by time. So this, this half of the equation is technically impulse. Because remember, impulse is equal to F net multiplied by delta T. So this impulse is technically also equal to change in momentum. And this is why this is called the impulse momentum theorem, because impulse is technically also equal to the change in momentum. So impulse is also technically equal to change in momentum. So if they ask you to calculate the impulse acting on an object, there's two ways that we can technically do this. Either we use F net 
and delta T, so we use the net force and the time, that's one way to get the impulse, or if you are not given net force and time, you can use change in momentum. And I hope you remember that change in momentum is mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity. This is also covered in a previous video in this playlist. And everything that I mentioned now is on the slide, so it says here, impulse technically also equals change in momentum. So impulse equals F net multiplied by delta T, but that is equal to change in momentum, therefore this is also equal to this. That's called the impulse momentum theorem. Let's jump into an example. This is an easy example. So we've got a net force of 10 Newton, so that's F net is equal to 10 Newton, acts on a car, causing the car to accelerate. So remember, when you have a net force acting on an object, that will cause the object to accelerate. That's Newton's second law. The force acts for a period of over four seconds, so that's my time. Calculate the impulse of the car. Now what I want you guys to do and what you need to do for me, because remember, I mark metric papers, so I know how this works. If they ask for impulse, what you're immediately always, 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 always going to do is you're going to say that impulse is equal to F net multiplied by delta T. You're going to look at that and you're going to say, okay, they want impulse. Do I have F net? Do I have delta T? In this example, it's an easy example. Yes, I do. So we're going to sub it in. F net is 10. Delta T is 4. We get our impulse as 40. Remember your units. Newton seconds and because impulse is a vector it absolutely needs a direction now you could say but ma'am it didn't really give me a, a direction in the question it didn't say to the right or east or north so we're just going to say in the positive direction in the positive direction let's have a look at another example so in this example they're giving me a car of mass 500 kilograms in this example, I'm just going to highlight some variables. We've got 500 kilograms, and that is mass of the car, is traveling at a constant velocity of 30 meters per second. When the driver realizes that she's exceeding the speed limit, so she's going too fast, she decides to slow down. And how do you slow down? You apply the brakes for four seconds in this case. And it says, yeah, if a constant net force of 1,000 Newton slows down the car during the four seconds, so 1,000 Newtons is going to slow down the car, calculates. First, they want change in momentum of the car, and B, they want velocity. So let's take this step by step. Let's first look at what variables we have. So we've got mass. We've got initial velocity. That's the velocity that she was initially or traveling with in the beginning. Then we've got the brakes are being applied for four seconds. That is delta T or change in time. Now, a constant net force of 1000 Newton slows down the car. Now, this is very, very important in grade 12s because we're dealing with physics. We need to consider directions and we need to consider positive directions and negative directions. If she was initially traveling in this direction, which is the positive direction, let's say to the right. They don't really tell me. Let's just say to the right then the 30 meters per second is a positive because they, she was initially traveling to the right. When she applies the brakes, the brakes is going to cause her to slow down. So which way will the net force be acting? If it was a net force of 1,000 newtons to the right or a positive 1,000 newton, it would cause her to speed up. But because it's a net force that's causing her to slow down, it has to be a negative net force. So it's a net force in the opposite direction. I'm telling you about this because when we substitute that 1000 in, it has to be substituted in as a negative. Okay, first question, calculate the change in momentum of the car. So I like to write down what we're looking for. We're looking for delta P. If you look at what we have, change in momentum is delta P. We have velocity, we have mass, we have time, and we have net force. I hope you can recall what we just learned, which is the impulse momentum theorem. And the impulse momentum theorem says F net multiplied by delta T equals delta P. This formula is given on your data sheet. It's given on your formula sheet. So you, know, you need to write it down exactly like that because that's how it's given. It's called the impulse momentum theorem because impulse is equal to change in momentum. But we don't need to worry about impulse. They're not asking for impulse, but we use this, this formula. F net is negative 1,000. And the time 
is four seconds. And that's going to get me the change in momentum. Take note how I do not have to break this formula down. I do not have to expand it for, further. And what I mean by that is I don't have to go, okay, well, change of momentum is MVF minus MVI. This is true, and it is, but I don't need it yet in this question. So therefore, I don't need to do that. They are asking me to calculate the change in momentum. They are asking for this. So I'm going to leave that as my variable. I'm going to leave that as my unknown. So I've got negative 4,000. Okay, that's delta P. Now, a few things. That has no unit, so I'm going to get no mark. Momentum and change in momentum is a vector, so it needs a direction. And we can never, because this is a vector, we can never leave our answer as negative. So our, our answer is going to be, well, our change in momentum is 4,000. Now, what is the unit for change in momentum? It's kilograms meters per second. Go back to the previous video if you need help with that. And because it was negative, it means that the change is in the opposite direction, okay? In the opposite direction or in the negative direction. So you never leave your answer as a positive, you, as a negative. You change it from a negative to a positive. You never leave it as negative, but your direction will just be in the negative direction or in the opposite direction. You must include your unit. So that's A. Right. Now, example two, B. Let's take a look. They want the velocity of the car after four seconds. So just as a reminder, we've got mass, we've got initial velocity, we've got our time, delta T, and we've got a net force of negative 1,000 newtons because it's slowing her down, okay? We got the change in momentum. So from A, that's A's answer, it was negative 4,000 kilograms meters per second. Remember, we don't write negative 4,000 as our final answer. I'm writing it as negative 4,000 here because I might need to use this in my next calculation. And if I use it in my next calculation, I must substitute it in as a negative. So I don't leave it as a negative for my final answer, but I must substitute it in, substitute it in as a negative. Okay, so B, the velocity of the car after four seconds. So I want VF. Remember, after four seconds, that's after she applies the brakes. So what do you think I can do here? Well, what I can do is because I already know my change in momentum, I can use my change in momentum formula, which is mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity. This is how the formula looks on your formula sheet. So that is how I want you to write it down in your tests and in your exams. Then, if you want to take out mass as a common factor, you can. But please write down your formulae as they are on the formula sheet. Now, my mass is 500. Remember, your change in momentum, we worked it out, is negative 4,000. Negative 4,000. I'm going to substitute it in just like that. What is your final velocity? That is what you're looking for. Minus your initial velocity is 30. Now, note how it is not minus minus. It's just VF minus VI, VF minus 30. 30 is substituted in as a positive because it wasn't, the initial velocity was going in the positive direction. And I know that there's a minus there, but that's because of the formula. Then we solve. So I hope you know how to solve this. First things first, we say negative 4,000 divided by 500. And the reason why is because it is multiply over here. So you take the 500 over and it becomes divide. And I get negative 8. And then you get VF minus 30. We need to get VF by itself. So we take the negative 30 over. It becomes plus 30. So I've got VF is 22 meters per second. And grade 12s, take note of how VF has come out as a positive answer. What does that mean? That means that VF, sorry, that means that VF is actually going in the positive direction. Remember, we chose that way as the positive direction, to the right, or I'm just going to say that's the positive direction. Because VF came out as a positive, it means that the final velocity is in the positive direction. It's not in the opposite direction. And it does make sense because if you are driving in a car and you're traveling at 30 meters per second, and you hit the brakes, you don't all of a sudden change direction. 
you're still going in the same direction. You're just going slower. So, so she was going 30 meters per second. Now she's going 22 meters per second. So those are examples one and two. In videos to come, I will be covering more examples. I will also be covering the rest of the momentum topic, including the principle of conservation of linear momentum and inelastic versus elastic collisions. So I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Subscribe for more.